The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, living next door to the great Gildersleeve has its advantages for his niece, Marjorie. Yesterday, for instance, she had to go out shopping, so she got Bertie to sit with her small twins. Of course, it's pretty hard for a wonderful housekeeper like Bertie to do nothing but sit. Gee, I can never thank you enough for what you did, Bertie. Oh, I didn't do nothing, Miss Marjorie. I just sat with the twins. Unky, when I came home, Bertie had done my laundry. Oh, that's so? Oh, Bertie didn't do nothing. She just sat with the twins. And she ironed some things so beautifully. Things that I never seem to do right. Well, that's Bertie. Bertie didn't do much but sit with the twins. And on top of that, do you know what else she did? She cleaned my entire house. Well, Bertie's a jewel. Oh, Bertie didn't do nothing but sit with the twins. And do a little washing. And ironing. And cleaning. You know what? Bertie is a jewel. <laughs> I've never seen anyone so competent and with such a wonderful disposition. Oh, my dear, don't forget, I babysit for you once in a while. Because when I babysit, I just sit. (laughs) Oh, Unky. But I guess I've lost my job to Bertie. Gee, I wish we had somebody like Bertie all the time. Oh? She's so crazy about the twins, and they simply adore her. Yeah, Bertie loves children. I know how she always was about you and Leroy when you were growing up. She probably misses that contact with youngsters. Well... If she ever leaves you and Leroy, I hope she comes to our house. Uh, Has Bertie said anything about leaving us? Oh, of course not. It's just an idea. It's probably not a bad one. What? Well, it hadn't occurred to me, but uh, chances are you need Bertie more than we do. Now that Leroy's growing up. Well, now, Anki, I wouldn't think of taking her away from you. No, no, let's not dismiss the idea just because it has merit. Now, you forget I mentioned it. Oh, she was so cute when I came home. She was singing Ronnie and Linda to sleep. Yeah, Bertie's pretty handy with a lullaby. Ah, mm. She can shake the rafters, too. Right, George, I hadn't thought about Bertie going to Marjorie's until Marjorie mentioned it. In fact, I don't think she meant to say anything. Probably just slipped out. Of course, Bertie'd never bring up the subject. I wonder if I've been blind to the situation. Hello, Petey. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Petey, I need a new shaving brush. Very well. I have some genuine badger bristles I haven't unpacked yet. I'll get them. What's that squeaking noise? That's my new shoes. I wonder if you had live badgers back there. Let's open the box and find out. Oh, my goodness. No, nothing in here but shaving brushes. I'll take one, Petey. Very well. One badger brush it is. And I need some shaving cream. Very well. Lather or brushless? What do you think? I just bought a brush. (laughs) You don't have to get in the lather. (laughs) That was a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Brush, lather. May I have my shaving cream? Mm, What a squeaky druggist. If you don't mind, Mr. Gildersleeve, I hear enough about those shoes at home. Oh? Mrs. Peavy was complaining about the squeak, and she mentioned it once too often. She did, huh? I said, Mrs. Peavy? That's what I call her when I'm miffed. What do you call her when things are sailing smoothly? I call her Mrs. Peavy. (laughs) 
That way she can't tell whether I'm miffed or not. <laughs> so I said, Mrs. Peavy, a woman may wear the pants in the family, but there's one thing she can't do. She can't wear a man's shoes. Yeah, uh, what'd you say to that, Peavy? I didn't wait to hear. I squeaked right out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll bet you did. <laughs> Will this be all, Mr. Gildersleeve? I guess so. Oh, by the way, Marjorie was in yesterday. I, I don't see much of her. Well, the twins keep Marjorie pretty close to home. But things may be different soon. She may have Bertie. How's that? Marjorie let it slip that she'd like to have Bertie. And I suspect Bertie would like to be over there taking care of the twins. Well, that could be. But what would happen at your house? Well, it might be a little hard on Leroy, but he's a big boy now. Well, what about you? Well, I won't stand in the way, Peavy. Well, I mean, how would you get along without help? I don't have to have help, Peavy. I'm self-sufficient. You don't say it. A man can do the necessary things around the house. Mm, yeah. It wouldn't hurt if men relied more on themselves instead of on the women. Yeah, that could be. In fact, if a man puts his mind to it, he can get along without women. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> George, I think I'll talk to Leroy about this thing. Of course, we have Bertie to consider. And I'm sure she'd like to go over to Marjorie's. Oh, can't you find them? Bertie, I'm home. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, she's on the phone. I put them in the top bureau drawer in the twins' room. Uh Uh-oh, she's talking to Marjorie. Oh, don't mention it, Miss Marjorie. I had just the most wonderful time over there yesterday. That little Ronnie is so cute. You let me know when you want me over there again, and Bertie will come a running. Well, this is a good time as any to have that talk with Leroy. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty obvious to me now. Bertie belongs at Marjorie's. Leroy. Yes. Where are you? On the corner of the house, cutting the lawn. I don't hear the lawnmower. I'm resting. Uh, well, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Yeah? Yeah, I think I'll sit down beside you, my boy. Why don't you sit on the grass? On the grass? Yeah, that'll flatten it out and I won't have so much to mow. <laughs> Darn grass. You knock yourself out watering it to make it grow and then knock yourself out cutting it down again. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, it doesn't the way you put it. When I grow up, I'm going to become a naturalized Eskimo. Eskimo, huh? Live in an igloo and fish through a hole in my front yard. That'll be the life. Yes, yes. No lawn to mow in the summer, no ashes to haul in the winter. Just poke them down the hole. (laughs) Leroy, let's be serious a minute. Okay. What do you want to talk to me about, Unc? My boy, how would you feel about Bertie going over to Marjorie's? Well, she's over there half the time now. You I mean moving over there is a permanent thing. Yeah? How permanent? As long as she wants to stay. Forever. Gosh, what would we do? We could manage. I wouldn't know how to get along without Bertie. Well, I know she practically raised you, but the twins need her now. Oh, so they're behind this. Leroy, this is my idea. Yeah? Well, I better not say what I'm thinking. (laughs) My boy, it's always difficult to accept change, but we're men now. You and I can have a lot of fun together. How? Well... Cooking over a hot stove? (laughs) We eat out a lot. You always like to go out for dinner? Sometimes we go out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah? Oh, boy, I'd have chocolate sodas for breakfast. (laughs) What a way to start the day. Well, naturally, we couldn't eat out all the time. Once in a while, we'd eat at home. How about the cleaning? How about the dusting and the sweeping? Who's going to clean this big old house? Leroy, it isn't so big. Looks pretty big all of a sudden. Well, we really wouldn't need a place this size. We might rent it and take an apartment and make money on the deal. And raise my allowance? Uh, Anything is possible. What do you think, my boy? Well... In an apartment, you wouldn't have any grass to cut. You sold me. (laughs) Good. Let's go talk to Bertie. Bertie wants to go? Well, I'm just putting two and two together. 
As you say, she's over at Marjorie's half the time. And Marjorie expressed a wish for somebody like Bertie. Pretty obvious to me. Yeah. Of course, Bertie would never leave if she felt we needed her. So we'll have to convince her we can get along without her. Well, I don't know about this, but let's get it over with. We'll just let her know that she shouldn't feel obligated to stay with us. Uh, Bertie. Hello, Miss Gillespie. Hi. Hello, Leroy. Uh, Bertie, we've been thinking things over. Yeah, haven't we, Leroy? Yeah. Yes, sir? In fact, we've given quite a lot of thought to it. Yeah, but it's more Unc's idea than mine. Leroy, let's stick together. Okay. <laughs> what you two been thinking about? Well, uh, Leroy and I are pretty self-sufficient. Yes, sir? Yeah, aren't we, Leroy? I don't know. We haven't tried it yet. <laughs> Confounded Leroy. What haven't you two tried? Well, what I'm getting at is, if you'd like to go over and live with Marjorie, don't feel obligated to remain here. Mr. Gilsey, where'd you get the idea I want to go over to Miss Marjorie's? Bertie, you're not fooling me. I know how fond you are of the twins. Yes, sir, but I wasn't... Now, Bertie, don't pretend this is a new idea to you. We have to face these things, don't we, Leroy? Yeah. But, Mr. Gilsey, what would you and Leroy do? Oh, don't worry about us, Bertie. Leroy and I are perfectly independent. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Mr. Gilsey, Bertie wouldn't think of leaving you here because you're the most dependent, independent I ever saw. <laughs> no, Bertie. I got a life-size picture of you shifting for yourself, Leroy, because you're the most dependent, independent I ever saw. All right, Mr. Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know why Bertie would leave here? Bertie. Life-size because you're the most dependent, independent I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie's hard to budge. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. You good cooks wouldn't dream of making your favorite cake from that prized recipe of yours and then spoiling the results by frosting it with anything less than your best frosting, would you? And neither would you want to fix a luscious salad and use just any salad dressing on it. You want the finest salad dressing, one that'll add to the goodness of your salad, make it even more delicious. That's why so many good cooks insist on Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a truly marvelous flavor, a lively, teasing flavor that's just sharp enough. A flavor you can depend on to add worlds of taste appeal to even a simple salad. It's a different flavor, too, one no other salad dressing has. Because Miracle Whip is a special kind of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip actually combines the best qualities of good old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. And what a texture Miracle Whip has. It's creamy, thick, and smooth as can be because this dressing is blended carefully with special craft beaters. The very first time you try Miracle Whip, you'll know why it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. Why it outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Get a jar of smooth, delicious Miracle Whip from your grocer tomorrow... And enjoy a summer full of the most wonderful salads you've ever tasted. Salads made with the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, the great Gildersleeve has a notion that Bertie will be much happier over at Marjorie's. He gave her a gentle push in that direction and became a little miffed when Bertie laughed at the idea. But our water commissioner is still determined to make the sacrifice. I'll have to be a little more firm about this, Leroy. Yeah, I got the feeling Bertie didn't take you seriously. Well, she didn't give me a chance to explain why we don't really need her. Let's give up, Unc. No, sir. If we can just get her to go to Marjorie's and give us a chance to prove we can get along without her, she'll stay. Hey, come along, Leroy. Okay. Uh, Bertie? Yes, yeah, sir? What's this delegation up to now? It... We've been thinking about this thing. You've been thinking again? Yeah. And it isn't very flattering to have you feel that we can't shift for ourselves. No, sir. And, uh, uh, well, I'd like to suggest that you go on over to Marjorie's and Leroy and I'll surprise you. 
Mr. Gilsleeve, Miss Marjorie always calls me if she wants me. You know, I know that's what she says. But why don't you just run over there and leave things here to Leroy and me? <laughs> Bertie, this is a serious matter. Frankly, we plan to rent this house to somebody. Rent this house? Yeah, it's a little large for Leroy and me. We plan to take a small apartment. You do? You see, things are different now, Bertie. Yes, sir. Leroy's growing up, and we don't really need you. Well, the way Marjorie does. No, sir. She'll be delighted to have you, and you'll be happy over there with the twins, won't she, Leroy? Yeah. And once the move is made, everybody will realize it's all for the best. If you say so, Mr. Gilsey. Sure. Give it a try, Bertie. Start this afternoon. This afternoon? Why not? It'll be a wonderful surprise for Marjorie. Mr. Gilsey, I ain't done all my work over here yet. Never mind that, Bertie. And who's going to fix your lunch? You or Leroy? Well, Peavy, I guess. Come on, Leroy. So, you see, Leroy, it isn't going to be so bad. No, I guess not the way you put it. Good. Now, how about a movie this afternoon? No kidding? No kidding. We've done a good turn for Marjorie and the twins and Bertie. And let's celebrate. Oh, boy. Aren't you Mr. Peavy's a movie downtown? When we get out, it'll be time to go to another restaurant. Yes, sir. How about a big steak dinner somewhere? Well, we can do as we please. We'll see how we feel about it. Yeah, we'll do as we please. Hello, Peavy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy, what can I do for you? How about a little lunch, Peavy? Yeah, I'm starved. Very well. Hey, what do you want, Leroy? Well, for an appetizer, I'll start off with a chocolate soda. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> then I'll have a couple of cheeseburgers, some french fries, and a double banana split. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, are you sure you want a double banana split with your cheeseburgers? You should order something to drink. Okay, I'll have another chocolate soda. Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> you don't eat like that at home. Bertie would never approve. Heck, Bertie's gone to margins. Yeah, Bertie made the move, did she? Yeah, but it was hard to convince her that Leroy and I could get along alone. It doesn't look like you're getting along alone. What? You're getting along with the help of Peavy's soda fountain. <laughs> what will you have, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, let's see. How's your merchant's lunch today? Well, I haven't heard any merchant complain. Good. That could be because I haven't served it to any merchant. No. Oh. <laughs> you make it three cheeseburgers, Peavy. <laughs> Very well. What will you have to drink, Mr. Jellisley? Well, when I'm at a fountain, I'm always tempted to have a malted milk. Vanilla, please. Very well. Uh, by the way, the price on malted is a little misleading. Oh? They're 35 cents now instead of 30. Well, Peavy, why don't you change the price on your menu? Well, if they don't move at 35, I'll just have to change it back to 30 again. Uh, eating lunch out is pretty expensive, Leroy. Yeah? We've ordered $2.45 cents worth already. And don't forget eight cents for the governor. But... Yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's going to mount up. And dinners are more expensive than lunches. Hey, where are we going to eat dinner, Unc? At home. <laughs> That's what he said, Miss Marjorie, and I wasn't going to argue with him, so I just came on over here. Oh, poor Unky. He has a knack for trying to do the right thing in the wrong way. <laughs> yes, ma'am. He practically pushed Bertie right out the door. Well, Unky should know I'd never take you away from over there. Bertie, you just stay here a couple of days until he's good and sorry. Oh, it won't take that long. Huh? <laughs> Bertie's going to be missed sooner than that. What do you mean? Well, when Mr. Gillsleeve and Leroy go looking for their clothes, they're going to find a lot of holes in their socks. Oh, Bertie, you didn't do the mending? Mr. Gillsleeve was so anxious to get me over here, I didn't have time to do nothing. I can just see him trying to get along without you. Miss Marjorie, who do you suppose is going to sew on them buttons when they fall off? I can't see Yankee or Leroy doing it. No, ma'am. They're going to be a couple of bachelors without buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Where Bertie keeps the frying pan. I don't know, Unc. You think Bertie deliberately hid things around here? 
Yo, here, here's the frying pan. Heat it up, Leroy. Gosh, imagine having to cook our own dinner. No, my boy, you're a boy scout. You should know how to cook. I don't know how to cook in the house. They just teach you to cook out in the open. Well, open all the windows and get busy. <laughs> what are we having for dinner anyway? The one thing I really know how to cook. Yeah? Bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs for dinner? What are we going to have for breakfast? Bacon and eggs. Oh, for corn's sake, we'll be living off bacon and eggs the rest of our lives. No, Leroy, enter into the spirit of this. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's see. I better break the eggs in the pan. Oop. Missed the pan. (laughs) Oh, well, you hit the stove. (laughs) Leroy, get a paper towel. Okay, God. Yeah, I'll try another one. Well, bullseye. Yeah, I'm doing the cooking. You do the KP. Clean up, my boy. What a life. Hey, this egg isn't working. It's smoking. Oh, a small oversight. Yeah? I forgot to grease the pan. Oh, brother. Yeah, I better pour some water on it and put it out. Hey, you're throwing out the whole kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I see this cooking isn't going to work. Flag, Unc. Let's get Bertie back. My boy, we can't do that. And I'll tell you what we can do. Yeah? We can eat out again. Now you're cooking. But before we go, we should clean up the kitchen. Get busy with the pots and pans. Oh, no, grown. Washing dishes and we haven't even eaten. <laughs> well, what would you suggest doing with the dirty dishes? Break them? <laughs> Leroy. What restaurant will we go to, Unc? Well, we won't go to any if I don't find a clean shirt with all the buttons on it. Hey, what goes here? Huh? I just put on a pair of socks and both my big toes are looking up at me. <laughs> toes, huh? This isn't like Bertie. Bertie! Oh, I forgot. I haven't. Who's going to mend our clothes, Unc? Well... When you come home tomorrow, you better bring a darning needle and a gourd. Yeah, you have an idea there. At the dime store, they sell little darning kits. Oh, fine. We can sit mending our clothes while watching television. Oh, Um, do you realize we're going to have to go through this every day? Not necessarily. When we look for our little apartment, we'll try to find one with maid service. Gosh, I'd kind of forgotten about moving. Well, that's one of the things you were looking forward to, my boy, the apartment. No grass to mow, remember? Well, if we take an apartment, we'll be moving out of this neighborhood, won't we? Well, yes. Uh, let's go to dinner. We'll be farther away from Marge and Bronco and the twins and Bertie. Yeah, that's right. Get your coat, my boy. I don't think I want any dinner. You don't want any dinner? All of a sudden, I'm not so hungry, Unc. Oh? All of a sudden, I don't feel so good. I think I'll go to bed. <laughs> Leroy, what's the matter? I... I sort of got a chill. Will you climb into bed? I'll get the hot water bottle. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see. Where is the hot water bottle? Yeah. Yeah, here we are. Luckily, the... Water's good and hot. How do you feel now, Leroy? Not so good. Worse. Hmm, better hurry. Here. Here, my boy. Put this in bed with you. Okay, but I doubt if it'll help. Maybe we ought to call Bertie, Unc. You think so? Where do you hurt? Well, let me see. Uh, Kind of all over, I guess. I got chills. Spots before my eyes. I'm dizzy and sort of trembly. Oh, my goodness. Stay where you are, Leroy. Don't move. Oh, Bertie! (laughs) 
Did you take his temperature, Mr. Gill, please? I'm taking it now, Bertie. Where's my boy? In his little bedroom. Leroy? Who's that? It's me, Leroy, Bertie. Oh, hello, Bertie. It's nice of you to come. Let me see that thermometer. Okay. What do you think, Bertie? A hundred and ten. A hundred and ten? Mr. Gillsleeve, this thermometer says a hundred and ten. Yeah, we better call a doctor. No, don't call a doctor. What? Maybe if I had a little Bertie soup, I'd pull through. Well, Bertie will go make you some soup. Well, Bertie. Yes, Leroy? While you're in the kitchen, could you fix some fried chicken and some of your potato salad and maybe a big piece of cheesecake? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Why, you ain't sick. Let me see that thermometer. Uh-oh. Mr. Gillsleeve, Leroy had that thermometer stuck in the hot water bottle. <laughs> oh, well, Bertie's back. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Mmm, there's just nothing like good potato salad. And there's nothing for good potato salad like Miracle Whip salad dressing. Just try it. See what a wonderful, peppy flavor Miracle Whip gives that salad. It's a different flavor, one no other salad dressing has. See for yourself how delicious Miracle Whip is. In potato salad and on gelatin salads, fruit salads, and meat and seafood salads, too. Get it tomorrow, the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. I certainly am lucky Bertie didn't take me up when I suggested she move to Marjorie's. Oh, what a dinner she prepared this evening. Well, I guess I'll relax and read the paper, knowing the house is in good hands again. Miss Gill, please. Yes, Bertie? I've been thinking about something. Oh? This whole thing has set Bertie to wondering if you know how busy she keeps around here. Oh, yes, indeed, Bertie. I'm well aware there are a lot of things that have to be done. Yes, sir. And Bertie even does a lot of things you may not be aware of. Well, that could be. It just ain't everybody could, who could run this place. Well, I'm sure you're right. I not only do the housework and the cooking, I save on the cleaning bills. Yes, indeed. And on the laundry bills. Yeah, I know. You help in many ways. Yes, sir. There's a thousand things around here nobody can do like Bertie. Yeah, well, we appreciate it, Bertie. And uh, now that you bring it up, how would you like an extra $5 a week? Mr. Gillsleeve, I didn't come in here for a raise. You didn't? I came in to point out how cooperative I can be. Oh. But I accept the money. Bertie will cooperate there, too. <laughs> oh, well, she's worth it. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. And it's partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Shetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week throughout the summer for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too, but here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. And craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard. Tonight, play...